Welcome back. We've just got over the jet lag, so about a week after spending two and a little bit weeks in Australia. It's a little bit weird trying to work out how much actual time you spent there. So even though it was two weeks and two days, you lose two days traveling. So really it's two weeks actually in Australia. What we thought we would do, as we mentioned before in some previous videos, is kind of review whether Australia would be a place that we'd want to live, but also give a general review of what Australia was like being there, especially from two people that never really had the urge to travel never. there. It's so bizarre. Never thought of traveling to Australia, never wanted to go on holiday there and never actually really considered living there either. So Melbourne, what's the culture and lifestyle like? The first thing that really struck me was just how diverse and multicultural it is, which I really like because growing up in London, it's always been quite diverse. And it was just really nice to see a city that is like that, especially I think for us living day to day in Vegas, we don't really get that diversity, not at the level that Melbourne had. And obviously that's then reflected in the food and just the people. And it was just really nice when I'm getting in an Uber and talking to people from different backgrounds. And I would also say people from different countries that I've never don't normally speak to mm. as well. Particularly having moved to Summerlin, Las Vegas, Melbourne is very similar to London in terms of diversity. I don't think it's the same in terms of the spread? split. Yeah. As in not the spread, it might be as diverse, but I think the yeah. split oh, yeah. between black or Asian or Chinese or whatever it happens to be would be significantly different, but that's because it's closer to different countries than the UK. But it was actually really nice being part of that again. Next was noticing the busyness or lack of busyness. When you compare it to London, to me, it didn't really feel that alive in Melbourne. It felt quite dead. And multiple times we went out for dinner on the trams and public transport around five o'clock. And you can easily get on the tram. You don't have to fight anyone. Yeah. Nobody's arguing, you're not bumping you into know, people. rush hour in London, how busy it Chaos. would be. I remember the first day we went out to Port Melbourne to go to the beach and apparently it hadn't been, it was the first Good, good weather. Good day, day that we. So in my head, in England, when that happens, everyone is going to the hot spots and you know you're struggling to get a parking spot, yeah. beaches are busy. But when we got there, there was just hardly, there was no one there. There's nothing going on, really. <laughs> so that was a bit surprising. Which for me is a positive because if you want city life, which you do get in abundance, it's a true city feel with. <laughs> one tenth of the people that you would expect obviously as more people go there it's going to build up but it was quite nice for me i actually enjoyed that part of it being a city the other thing i noticed was the architecture in melbourne it was to me really interesting you had really old victorian english buildings with the backdrop of super contemporary skyscrapers and then stuff in between everything felt like it had its own feel and moment in time which the UK or England does have some parts of London are like that. But generally, if you've got a street of Victorian homes, that's what it that's, is. Yeah, it you don't then have that, then suddenly modern this stuff. modern building. Yeah. Time, yeah, which yeah. Melbourne had, and I really enjoyed that. Something that really struck me with Melbourne was you do have that city life, but then you have the beaches. And I think in one of the videos, I commented on that similarity to San Diego, where you'd have that, that hub, but you're very close to it the is water much better the restaurants and that vibe so that was really nice uh, lots of people out keeping fit when we were out walking along port melbourne what was also nice about melbourne as well is you've got the area of the city but you can drive an hour out from melbourne and you've got the wineries you've got other beaches and i think that was really nice about being in melbourne next is food in melbourne and everyone i think in the lead up to going there had told us you are going to Love it. If you are a foodie, Melbourne is the place to go. I would agree. It did not disappoint in terms of the options mm -hmm. of food and also the quality of food. So one of the our favourite restaurants there was this farm to table food yeah. that we farmer's daughter. Yeah, yeah, and it was really good. It was really nice to just have an abundance of choice, but with good quality food at a good price. They really, really do take food seriously. They take their produce seriously. And something I really enjoyed throughout Australia actually, but in particular Melbourne was you can pay a set fee, which was usually around 60 US dollars, which to us doesn't seem realistic oh, yes. because of US prices. It was shockingly cheap in comparison. Yeah. And I think we're going to do a separate video on this, but just to mention it here, I read on a review 
site like Reddit, somebody had posted up, Australia is significantly more expensive than the US and Asia. And they went on to list out their experience and I believe them. But what we found is we bumped into a few people from the Midwest that live in places that are super rural, they have 10 acres and they were saying how expensive Melbourne seemed. To us, it seems so extremely cheap. cheap. It's at least 25 to 30% cheaper. So this again is one of those things where everybody's experience is probably true. It depends on where you're coming from. Here in Las Vegas, prices are out of control for food and eating out. So for us, we're eating out five courses every night for less than just a normal meal at really high-end restaurants as well. So I thought it was amazing, to be honest, the food there. The other thing that I was actually very surprised about were the portion sizes. So everyone talks about <laughs> the portion sizes here in America. I actually think the portion sizes in Australia were just as large, if yeah. not bigger. One of the other things that was kind of nice, even though we've spent most of our life living like that, we got used to the American system of tipping. And although I do agree with tipping to an extent, it was really nice not having to do that. It's not expected. <laughs> It's nice, isn't it? The yeah. bill is the bill. The bill is the bill. And you can add something discretionary yeah. if you want to, but it's really not expected. And it just made paying so much easier. The one thing they do do, which is actually really, it's odd in some respects in that we've never come across it before, but it's actually quite smart, is that there is a standardized surcharge at restaurants which apply on weekends and public holidays. In general, a weekend has a 10% surcharge on the bill. And it tells you right up front when you enter the restaurant and on the menus if it's the weekend it's a 10 percent often on a bank holiday or a national holiday it's going to be a 15 percent surcharge on top of the bill which unusual but kind of makes sense i don't know kind I, of it, does. Kind, it does and maybe if you're used to it, i just found that really odd the fact that i had to pay more to eat at a restaurant at a weekend the other thing that was a bit odd in melbourne and i think actually most places we went to australia, australia yeah. actually was there was an extra charge in the restaurants if you paid with a credit card and this wasn't uncommon in most places even in re retail shops sometimes yeah. it would be the same but i found that very unusual coming from places where it's very normal to be cashless and pay on card that they charge you an extra fee which leads to the other thing that was a little bit different about eating out in Australia and that was how you paid. First of all Ant and I get confused about paying now because we fully adjusted to the American way which is they come with the bill you put your card in they take it away then they come back then you sign it and then this then all this magic happens. <laughs> so a long convoluted process for paying in America but we've kind of got used to that. In Australia what we found is if you are at a place that I would I guess I would describe it as casual dining. Definitely casual dining, quick service. It is. You would either, first of all, you'd pay at the counter, which is fine initially. but At, at the point of ordering. At the point, yeah. point of ordering. Or if you do order, but you pay at the end, you would still have to go back to the counter. So yes. in some cases, we were sat there not knowing, do we ask for the bill or do we have to go up? But we did find with casual places, casual dining, you yeah. go to the counter. Yeah. Now, for those more kind of like sit-down meals, which are longer then they would bring the bill to you with a card machine yeah. <laughs> which is more like what we do in the uk yeah very it is the uk okay. method not that we came up with it but that is what we're used to in the uk what i would say is it makes for a much more efficient dining process so if you're going out for lunch which often we'd leave the apartment we'd go downstairs maybe we were dropping you off to work or whatever it was you walk in you order you pay you sit down and you get your meal within five minutes you eat you leave or you walk in you order you sit down you eat as soon as you finish you walk to the counter which is always on your way out you pay and you leave i would say it's that makes more sense to me a way more efficient system than both the uk and the us the us is without a doubt the slowest and i know not every state is the same but at least here in vegas it's a 74 stage process in which you're constantly waiting for something to happen. Australia have got rid of all of that. There's no waiting. You're just in, pay, out, eat and it out. makes sense because then the, the, the waiter or waitress isn't waiting on you and having to check, mm -hmm. are you ready for your bill? Or if they're busy, which they often are here, you're waiting for them to get around free tables just to give you your bill. So I actually thought that that was a really smart but way of doing it. Your card for them to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> you got, I'm going to like really milk that point, but it's true. It's such an inefficient process here in the US. On to transport in Melbourne. I always get this wrong because I say Melbourne, which is apparently the posh way and there's nothing posh about me. It's Melbourne. So you kind of drop the O. I just think they're mispronouncing the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. but I fully come around to how Australians say it. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, transport system. For me, 
the best. It's one of the best transport systems because pretty much everywhere you would need to get to in terms of business, local beaches, shops, restaurants, is available on a tram system. The tram system is free within the CBD area, which stands for what, remind me? Central Business District. And then it's a very small charge if you're going out of that, and it's yeah. kind of zoned. And if you look at the map, and I'll see if I can put one on the screen, it shows you where it's going to charge you. We won't get into the details of it, but effectively, if you're gonna go out of the CBD area, you buy a Mikey card, and you just top it up like the London Oyster, and it will charge you a a couple of dollars per trip and then there's a cap on it so you might only spend seven dollars that day no matter how much traveling you've done the great thing alongside that is the tram system is super effective and they turn up every couple of minutes so and i know it's a really condensed area but for where we were and what we needed we didn't actually have to get a car that week now we did but that's for a different reason but if we were just staying in melbourne the tra oh, tram yeah, system would have been great. didn't need a car. Uber is available, readily available, about the same price as the UK and the US. I wouldn't say it's significant. I think they also have the other apps in that region, like Ola, which uh, aren't really well known on this side of the world. So there are other app, um, driver apps. Like, or uh, Asia has different ones yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. But we did hire a car also. How we, did that go? <laughs> which was interesting in and of itself, because if you're staying in the city of Melbourne, they have the tram which means when you're driving you have to be mindful of the route that you take with the trams and sometimes you would see cars in the middle of the junction yeah. which was very confusing but we realized it's to stay there until the tram goes past yeah. and then they can go and then sometimes it wasn't really clear which lane was for you or not definitely and we learned this this wasn't just us when we arrived there were cars on the tram lines, realizing that they had to get yeah. off. So I don't know whether they were confused or whether they're trying to jump the queue, but there was definitely an added element of difficulty. Difficulty, also knowing if you were in the right lane. So the other issue we had when we were getting out of the city was, of course, sometimes you need to go left or right or go straight, but sometimes your straight would become a left and then mm -hmm. suddenly you're going off in the wrong direction, which I didn't find the signage as easy as I've noticed. Actually, I think it's better here. We've had this discussion a few times and I think your original stance was that it was confusing here and the roads yeah, are a bit dangerous. more- I think what some dangerous. Of the things that Okay. they do here is dangerous as in road etiquette and how they have merges yeah. however for me even though australia drives on the same side of the road as the uk which would seemingly make something more easy because you're more used to that it feels like the left hand side of the road is the wrong side <laughs> of the road it's easier to drive here but not only that because of the size of us roads and how big they can have their signs and the way they build them it's so much easier here and i've got used to three years of very easy driving so i struggle a little bit in Australia not massively the first day there was definitely some I'm in the wrong lane I should have turned here I wasn't paying attention Added enough to our sat nav issues of not wanting to work and not work oh. uh, yeah our theory of it not working in that part of the world next is weather this is an interesting topic because I think it can be a bit of a difference of opinion it's perception and <laughs> context like we said different people experience things differently exactly and in the lead up to going to Melbourne I was warned by colleagues that Melbourne can be a bit erratic you never quite know what you're going to get and I would personally say and this is where we're different I think the weather we experienced in Melbourne wasn't actually that bad we had some really nice hot days where we went to the winery the first day we went, went to the beach however I will agree that it was all over the place like it would start being hot one day and sunny then it would go to being gray then it would rain then it would be freezing cold mm -hmm. And it does switch up in the day, but also day to day. Yes. Initially, I, I said that the weather was bad, but on reflection and speaking to Selena, it wasn't bad. And there are definitely moments you can enjoy, but it's moments. You don't know from one hour to the yeah, next four right. hours what might happen. And I think what gets to me, which is why I interpret it as bad, is it's often grey. So even if it's warm and it starts off sunny, you'll maybe get a four or five hour period of just greyness. And immediately that tells me this day is a write-off. And I know it isn't because when you explain it to me and actually look through 
I actually else. had to go day by day yeah. with him because he described the weather as bad. And I kept saying, well, there's no way that Melbourne is worse than the UK and London. She is right. It, it isn't worse and it is good weather. I it's not my, <laughs> yeah, it's not my sort of weather. In fact, I think the second day I was at Jiu Jitsu there, one of the trainers said to me, oh, how are you finding the weather? And I was just like, I don't, he said, it's schizophrenic, we know. <laughs> that's, that's the best. <laughs> it's just like, it just bounces all over the place. So they're aware of that. I mean, if you like variety in your weather, <laughs> yeah, we'll day, in the day, it's a great place to be. All in all, I really enjoyed our nine nights in Melbourne. I really went there with no expectation other than this amazing food. And I really enjoyed it and would highly recommend it as a place to visit. Agreed. I went in with not only no expectations, I'm not a person that reads reviews or reads up on stuff or where should we go and really surprised myself or was surprised by how much I enjoyed being there. Not just the city, even the trips that we did outside. Yeah, exactly. where, Lots to do outside. Yeah, as well. and I think it was quite a fulfilling place. We haven't mentioned coffee and there's a reason for that. I think this might be an Australian thing or at least a South East Australian thing because it was amazing everywhere. Our first experience was of course Melbourne, that's where we landed and that's where we had the first nine days. So I assumed it was going to be just great there. But we then went on, which we'll talk about shortly, to Hobart, which is in Tasmania and also Sydney, where it was equally as good. It's kind of hard to describe. People that live there know, they tell you it's it's the best. But we've we've been in the UK, which has pretty good coffee. We've been to France many times, which has very good coffee. And we've been to Italy, which has very good coffee. Melbourne, better everywhere. Actually, I think we could have dedicated, yeah, we could have dedicated a video to coffee in Australia. It was exceptional. And it was something I was also thinking about coming home and thinking, damn, I'm going to miss that. Not only did we notice how the coffee here is just bad, the same trainer at Jiu Jitsu just said he comes out here quite frequently, once, twice a year because he competes. And he just said he won't drink the coffee. He said he's tried in all the different places. In the end, he just buys a pre-made coffee from whatever place it is so he can get cold coffee and get his caffeine fixed. And I know Americans won't necessarily understand this unless you've been to you Australia. You have to try the coffee Yeah, in Australia. it's a different it's product. Yeah, it's completely different. Our next stop was Tasmania or Tassie as the Australians call it. I don't think I'd ever looked into it. I'm aware of Tasmania because I watched Warner Brothers cartoon, so I knew of the Tasmanian yeah, devil. It's the same for me, it's the Tasmanian devil. That was all yeah. I ever knew. But... Which isn't even representative of the animal. No, we saw the animal and <laughs> yeah. it did not look the same. And we were there for two nights. Yes. Two nights and everyone in the lead up was saying, oh, you're going to love it. Tassie is such a beautiful place to go to, which was a bit of a surprise because just never heard of it. Selena was a little bit delayed to me, so I got to arrive during the daytime on the first day. It's a beautiful island. It's really Huge visually... Island, by the way. Yeah, we thought yeah. it was a small <laughs> island. It's, it's massive. Uh, visually impressive. And we ended up, or Selena accidentally booked this hotel room that was overlooking. We were kind of high up overlooking the port. It was probably the best room and the best view oh, we've had in amazing. any hotel room. I think I'd been working at the hospital that day, flew in, got there late that evening, but got there before sunset. And mm. I just sat in this room where you just had this sweeping view of the Hobart. What was it the docks and yeah, everything? Yeah, marina, there, I'm not sure the, what it's The called. marina, but it was very, very visually pretty. Selena was working the next day. So when we say we got two days that we didn't really, we enjoyed some coffee, we enjoyed food. We had another one of the pay 60 US dollars and have five courses. <laughs> yeah. We walked around the harbor a little bit, but what we did do was we took a boat tour which was can you remember how much it was super cheap it was quite cheap i can't remember how much under 40 dollars yeah, i think exactly. per person and it was an hour long and it essentially you could go the north or south route and it was a very nice way just to see parts of hobart from the boat and the history super interesting i never liked history in school history in school still as i remember is very boring and very curated obviously that's what history is however when you're in the location and people are telling you about the history i find it very interesting the main history of australia as people can imagine is the brits arrived they imprisoned everyone they made them work we were very lucky with the weather there as in because i think it was very hot that day yes and 
Hobart isn't known for necessarily great weather all year round. And actually, I met somebody that had explained that they moved from Melbourne to Hobart mm. specifically because it's cooler there. And for us, I know we wouldn't have enjoyed it as much if it was cold out. So got to appreciate the place with good weather. The other thing I remembered as well as the food is that they had lots of really good bars that we didn't actually check out there while we were there, but they take their gin seriously. And as a gin lover, it's surprising that I did not go to one of the places. But in all, I would say if you are going over to Australia, it's, I think it's a little over a one hour flight to get to Hobart. You mean Melbourne? Oh yeah, Melbourne. Yeah. It's not a long flight, definitely worth visiting for at least two nights mm -hmm. and having the full days there. Our next and final stop was Sydney. Unfortunately, because we had nine days in Melbourne, we only got two days there as well. In, in Sydney. one night and it wasn't really fully two days because then we left the second day. Yeah. It really wasn't a long, but we were trying to be as effective as we could be. So a little bit disappointed and we can't really give a full review because one night is yeah. not enough time. However, we did get a sense of the culture because the place that we picked to stay was right on Bondi Beach. So what did we think of the culture and the lifestyle in that one day that we got? <laughs> so immediately what we noticed was attire and physical fitness was the thing that was most... Making me feel insecure. <laughs> I kept saying, you're, you probably feel at home. Yeah, you said this is your people. You, this is your people. But <laughs> Everyone was in sports attire, either running, working out. There was a section that reminded me, I think it's Muscle at Muscle Beach, Beach, where people were doing these things like pole tricks. But just to point out, this wasn't, that makes it sound like this was only happening on the beach. Where we were staying was set back quite a few blocks on the beach and 90% of the people were fit and if they were not going to the gym they were coming from the gym or they were going to or from the beach. Or just showing you that they work out. Yeah no tops no flip-flops or what they call them thongs over there. Yeah. They're just barefoot just roaming around with their tops off and I was like I hope I'm in shape still. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't a demographic thing in terms of age. This was irrespective. Everybody. This is young, older people. Yeah. Everyone was generally quite very fit. I'm not going to say yeah. quite fit. I would say very fit. Alongside noticing that everyone was either running or working out or coming from the gym, we also noticed heavily this culture of hanging out at the coffee bar. So lots of people in the afternoons or in the day, depending on, I don't know. I kind of had a sense, do people even work here? I don't <laughs> No. It does feel like that. Because <laughs> a lot of people were out in the parks or by the beach yeah. with their laptops. So lots of people hanging out with friends. And also when it got into the afternoons, we noticed a lot of groups of friends meeting each other to go to the bars. So just a really nice sense of people hanging out in their community mm. and enjoying life. Active yeah. as well. So even though Australians are known for dr being drinkers, they're active drinkers. They do their surfing, they drink a bit, they <laughs> re-surf. <laughs> they come back, they work out drunk. <laughs> That's it. When they go back to the bar. <laughs> yeah. That seemed to be the cycle, though. It probably, yeah, it, it really did. And that, that was our experience because we stayed in Bondi. Had we have stayed in the CBD area mm -hmm. of Sydney, I don't know if we would have noticed we something did, different. Yeah. And maybe somebody that lives there or has stayed there for an extended period. We got told, or at least I got told, not to stay in the city. So, although, which we'll come on to, we did visit we were told don't stay there stay closer to the beach but i don't know whether it would have made sense to do maybe half the time i if think we had. next time like, we'll do time in the city just to see okay. what it's like and especially to compare it to melbourne as well next is food and again we can't really say much because we weren't there long enough but from what we could tell the options of food didn't seem that different to what was available in Melbourne to me. We still had good food there. It The mix of food seemed about the same and the quality seemed really good. So for me on that one day, I couldn't really say that there was anything bad to say about the food options at least. No, but what I can say is Sydney prices were the same as Las Vegas prices, which yeah. tells you it's a lot more expensive than Melbourne. I don't know, if there was, it was like a couple of dollars either side, but food and drink was quite expensive there. Next is transport. Immediately as I arrived and I got into the Uber, the first thing I noticed was the traffic 
completely different to Melbourne in that it was far, far busier and we were just sat in standstill traffic a lot more than we experienced in mm. Melbourne. And from what we know, Melbourne is experiencing traffic because of a lot of roadworks at the moment. So there's a reason why it's happening. So I've been told. Whereas Sydney, I think that's just the norm is, yeah, yeah, across the city. But what they do have, and that was very similar to Melbourne, is they have a very good public transport system, which is something we definitely miss living here now. And pretty much most of the people I know and I, I've met across the trip were saying they wouldn't drive. They would Yeah, use even the when we asked where to go, yeah. the girl was like, just go and jump on a bus. And in my head, I was like, who jumps on the bus? Because you get detached, yeah, don't you? Yeah. But it's just normal for them. Why would you be in an Uber when you can just get a bus and it will take 15 minutes for $2 or whatever? And the same thing when I went, I went to a hospital that day and I asked the colleague how he got there and he said, oh, he didn't have the car, so he got on a train there. So very mm. and that to me was london living if you did yeah. if you didn't drive somewhere you would either get on a bus a tube or a train so lots of options but one of my favorite modes of transport yeah. that they had there were the commuter ferries so everyone said to us if you if you don't have time to do anything get on one of the ferries and essentially around the sydney harbour area there's these ferry ports across various areas that go to different bays and essentially you can just get on a ferry and it will take you to another location. And it's a great way to see the area from the ferry, but what we didn't expect was to go to these amazing places. And one of the places we went to was Watson Bay, mm. and it was so, so nice. Probably one of my favorite places, and more because it's a surprise, I think, <laughs> because believe me, if you're not from London, get on the Woolwich Ferry, which is a commuter <laughs> ferry. And no matter which side you get on, you're going to somewhere equally as rough when you yeah, get I was off. thinking grim, grim and then it's, grimmer. <laughs> yeah, it's very grim. And even when you get off, it's just, it's yeah. actually physically dirty and yeah, it feels horrible. Horrible. Here you jump on at this kind of lush green area where we got on and then as you're sailing away you're overlooking the CBD area and then you arrive with this pristine crystal clear water with a beachfront and then these restaurants overlooking the beach and I'm just like how who would go right we're gonna go to Australia but we're going back home who would land there <laughs> and then go back to the UK. It just yeah. baffled me that anyone would return. Yeah, it should just be a one-way ticket. And I just never knew Sydney would be that nice. Yeah. It was surprising. And that was just a random bay that I picked on that day because of convenience. Mm -hmm. The food was great. We both enjoyed a drink, watching the water mm -hmm. and... Oh, and I still think of, I'm still thinking of it right now. And finally, the weather. Way more up my street. At least the days that we were there. And for anybody watching this in the future, which you will all be, because it's recorded now and published in the future, it, it was just coming out of their summer season, wasn't it? Yeah. Because we arrived end of Feb, going into March. So end of the summer season for Australia. But it was just really nice sunny days. However, Sydney was a little bit more humid, so it's a little bit less comfortable than when it gets warm in Melbourne but for me it was perfect and especially if you're by the sea the ocean whichever it is there you get a nice breeze so if I had to choose weather 100% yeah. I would never be in Melbourne for weather but I would be for Sydney and pretty much everyone that I met that likes Sydney for its weather it is because of that because it's a hotter place yeah. it's more humid they don't like the yo-yoing of yeah. Melbourne they don't like the grey skies I instantly could feel the difference as soon as I arrived and I actually and because we don't have any humidity here in Vegas I think immediately when I feel it it's like oh this feels so nice so See, I yeah. told you we should live in Florida hey, yeah, I, know. <laughs> I tried to convince her but she's like no my hair but maybe we'll move to a slightly more humid place in the future oh spiders <laughs> not a single large bug or spider scene in Melbourne. Day one, coffee shop one in Sydney, two giant, like this big spiders just roaming through the coffee shop as if it's nothing. It wasn't even in the wilderness or by the bush, just in the coffee shop. So Sydney overall, great weather, definitely more expensive than Melbourne and not just the stuff that we experienced, the homes. You have a friend that 
either lives there or was going to live he lives there right way more expensive however what you get back from that is really nice towns great public transport beaches and all of the stuff that people dream of in england when you think about leaving <laughs> it's there in sydney <laughs> yeah. it does exist the only thing i regret is that we didn't spend enough time there Definitely. so if we ever go back to australia we'll sydney will be the place that we spend more time in okay to finish up the video what do we think about Australia in general? Number one is, even from the US, which is much closer, it's still a 20 hour trip door to door. It's painful. And from the UK, it's even further. So I think even if you get the direct flight to Perth, yeah, that one flight is 21 yeah. hours. So that's the first thing. It's a painful journey to go there. So if you are gonna go, you need to spend two plus weeks, probably three weeks there. The next thing is language. For me, I think me and Celine had slightly different takes on this, but we'll see what she says. I didn't feel foreign once there. I often feel foreign in the US. So in Australia, I can talk at the normal pace of a Londoner. I can use all of the London terms and they don't bat an eyelid. They don't even pause to think yeah. about it. It's just at natural pace. So although you can hear the accent in people, it's such a natural way to communicate. What was your, because you worked with people yeah, there, didn't you? So there were similar, but slightly different. So first of all, I love the fact that I didn't have to think about how I speak. And I do have to think about how I speak here yeah. in the US. I do adjust, I use different words. Whereas in Australia, I could just talk how I normally would back home, which was really nice. I, and actually I noticed it when I came back here, <laughs> yeah. I realized, oh man, I've got to adjust how it's I speak again. English. So that was great. And also I could do my jokes in the way that people understand it. Jokes. I don't have jokes. <laughs> I have some jokes. Okay. <laughs> But I could talk in the way that I normally do with the humour and that was really good. The bit that I did notice is there were words that they use that aren't similar and I think I heard them a lot more because I was working with Australians. Mm. I also noticed people recognising my accent and pointing out my accent, mm. which I don't think happened to no. you, but I had people say, oh, actually really notice call out where I come from, oh, you must be from England, oh, you sound posh, which was very interesting because I do get it here. And I'm not to say that it happened a lot in Australia, but it did happen for me. And there are ways of phrasing things that I'm not used to. <laughs> the next aspect that I really noticed in Australia was safety. One of the things I really liked about Australia overall, certainly in the places that we visited, was how safe I felt. I never had a moment where I was concerned about getting in an Uber on my own or walking down this street or going to this place. And, and I weren't always together. So some places I, were, I was traveling alone. And I kind of had the feeling that I do back home in the UK where I never really worry. Of course, in England, you know certain areas you shouldn't be going to. And of course, I don't have that context for Australia, but I certainly didn't get the feeling of being unsafe while I was there. In contrast, and this might be hard for some viewers to understand, especially if you've been born and raised in America. I don't say that I feel unsafe here in Vegas day to day, but there is something about the US probably the guns, that make me feel unsafe. And I can't describe it. It's not that I live here day to day feeling worried or concerned, mm. but there is something in the back of my mind that's always there and it's very different. Whereas in Australia, I never had that. I didn't know I had anything to add to the safety thing. I, I feel fine in most places. However, there is exactly what you said is right. I know for America, this is really hard to understand. This is not an attack on America or how you believe or what you believe about guns or whatever. As an English person, the very worst, let's say you get into a road rage incident. You might wind down your window, you shout at them, they shout at you. You might get into a fight. It doesn't really happen, but it does happen sometimes. And you both walk away, generally. Here, you don't know that somebody isn't having an extremely bad day, and today is the day that they're about to do something really stupid. And although that isn't at the forefront, you don't go out going, oh, this might happen today. Sometimes situations come up where you're like, oh, I don't know. I know for some Americans that makes you feel safer. As a non-American, it makes us feel less safe because the outcome can be so extreme for us. So you're absolutely right. I definitely have that. I don't really think about it consciously, but you're right. That is something that does play out. So that's our review, overview of the three places that we visited on our Australian trip. 
I think we'd both happily return there. I'd go back this I'd week. I'd even longer. Then, yeah, yeah, me too. We're not gonna cover whether we would move there in this video, as you've probably noticed. We are actually just about to create another video right now, once we cut this one off, on whether or not we would move to Australia. So stay tuned for that one, and thanks for watching.